I don't know if that's a spoiler. I forgot how to do this. Hey guys, it's Meredith. Um, welcome to my channel if you are new and if you are not, I still probably need to reintroduce myself. It's been a hot minute. I just needed to take a break. I was putting a lot of pressure on myself and I was being really hard on myself about posting and the amount of books I was reading and the types of books I was reading. And on top of that, it was my first year working at a new job. And so I was just so stressed and the burnout was so real. It was getting to the point where I didn't even like reading, which is really sad because I use it as kind of an escape and it wasn't even something I was enjoying, which I knew was not good. Since the last time I saw you guys, I actually got engaged, which is exciting. Um, I am currently moving into the apartment. It's actually Mark's apartment. I'm just here a lot um, and he let me decorate, hence the flowers and books behind me that is all mine but anyway I decided to just kind of talk about some of my recent reads uh since the last video I posted was in February I did not do a February wrap up at all so I thought that I would talk about some of the books that I read from February to the end of May and it's really not many considering that that's quite a few months. First book that I read in February was There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This book is a book that I read for a vlog that I plan to put out in February where I read three books from romance authors who wrote thrillers. So I had read Verity by Colleen Hoover, There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins, and when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole and I filmed this like right in the height of my burnout and so you could tell I was just not enjoying filming or talking about the book at all any of the books and so I did not post it anyway this book follows these two high school kids who are going to a high school where these murders keep happening that's basically kind of it. I really don't remember much about this book. I ended up giving it three stars. It's a book that I think I would have liked a lot if I was in high school since that's the age that the characters are and it was kind of just a little bit too YA for me but I honestly didn't hate it and I really thought I would. I did enjoy the two main characters one reason that I really think that I would have loved this book in high school is because the main guy character, I believe his name was Ollie, he was described as this like blonde punk boy with a lip ring and immediately I went to like 2017 like Luke Hemmings from Five Seconds of Summer who was and like maybe still is my like number one celebrity crush so like i mentioned my memory is a little foggy with this one but it was good for ya it was very like middle of the road the second book that i read in february is going to be a very controversial one and it was red white and royal blue by casey mcquiston and i gave this book 2.5 stars <laughs> so i know that i'm about to be hated for this but I was just not the biggest fan of this book and part of me thinks that is because I just hyped it up so much in my head because this is a book that I don't think I had heard a bad review on until after I finished it because after I finished it I was like I cannot be the only one who didn't think this book lived up to the hype so I had to look up <laughs> some people who agreed with what I thought I guess. I did enjoy the characters, I thought they were fine, but I thought that the dialogue was really kind of cringy and unrealistic, like it just, they didn't really talk like real people. I can't really think of an example, but I know that that was something that kept putting me out of the book, like just the way that they would talk to each other was very like YA, when this isn't a YA book. Another thing, and this is kind of on me a little bit I guess, I didn't know that it was going to be so heavy on politics and that's fine like I knew that it was a romance that revolved around two guys that were from political 
families, but I guess, I don't know. I didn't know that it would focus so much on the politics of the families. I guess what I mean is just like, I didn't really care about like the election at the end or any of that. Like I just, I wanted to see the romance between the characters. And so anytime like the politics would get involved, I just got kind of annoyed, I guess. And I understand how it made an impact on the story, but it's just not something I enjoyed, especially when this was like a fiction romance. Usually when I read fictional romance, I am looking for just kind of a cutesy little story and it was fine. It wasn't something I hated, but it wasn't something I really liked. And I think that's why I gave it that 2.5 because I was very like directly in the middle on my opinion on the book. I definitely think it had some pros. I definitely see why people like this one. Um, I just don't think it was for me. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next, I read The Simple Wild by K.E. Tucker and I gave this 4.5 stars. I really really loved this book and I think it's kind of funny because this is one that I see very mixed reviews on and Red White and Royal Blue I really only see positive reviews on it and so I think it's kind of funny that I really liked the controversial one but I didn't really enjoy the popular one I don't know. This book very much gave me beach read vibes while I was reading it, mainly because I enjoyed the romance that was in the book, but it also had just so much more. I am such a sucker for books that involve any sort of family dynamics or family drama or anything because family storylines just really get to me. Whether it's a sibling, a parent, a grandparent, any sort of family relationship, I so in this book, Kala is reconnecting with her estranged father because he has cancer and so she goes to visit and she meets the people in this Alaskan town and it is just wonderful. I loved seeing the relationship build with her father. I love seeing her in this like Alaskan atmosphere. I know some people thought that Kala was really annoying but I just thought she was really funny and I kind of understood why it was so hard for her to get used to this town because it was just so different than what she was used to so I kind of sympathized with her even though it was fun to laugh at her because of it. A lot of the unpopular opinions about this book that I see have to do with the love interest Jonah and I do understand that because there were points where he kind of got on my nerves, especially with him trying to tell her like, I don't know, like you don't have to wear makeup, you don't have to do this, like no no no, because that's really not his business. I do think he eased up on that eventually. I think it's kind of the same thing with Kala where he just really wasn't used to someone like that. And so I think they also kind of get to understand each other. I don't know. I just really love this book. I haven't read the second one yet, but I need to order it because I am really excited to see where their relationship goes but I have heard that the first one's better so we'll see. Next I read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid which like I mentioned before I have a full vlog on so I won't get too much into it but long story short loved it five stars amazing. Taylor Jenkins Reid is just one of my favorites and I love her so would highly recommend Malibu Rising. Next is another one that I think is kind of an unpopular opinion, but I read Get Alive Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert and I gave it 3.5 stars. This was another book that I went into with such high expectations because it sounded so sweet and I was so excited. People talked about how much they loved Red and how their relationship was just so cute and I was ready for this cutesy romance. This is a book that if you would have had me rate it before I read it, I would have just assumed it was a five star. Like it was probably my number one five star prediction for the year of books that I wanted to read. And I think that might be why I was kind of let down by it. There were definitely more things that I liked about it than I disliked. I thought that that was really interesting to read Chloe's perspective on things and kind of things that hold her back and things. I don't know, I really liked Chloe's character and her voice. However, I was not the biggest fan of Red. You need to leave! I'm so sorry. He was just a 
such an average love interest like there was nothing about him that really made me like all giddy or anything and I think this will be an extremely unpopular opinion but I just never really felt that much chemistry between them I just kind of think things happen very quickly like things turned extremely steamy between them like this book is so much steamier than I expected it to be oh my book I thought it was going to be a lot like a hating game kind of steaminess level and this was like a lot of steam. I just personally would have liked to see more of a build up or more of a relationship development between the two. I mean I finished it in February so maybe I am kind of wrong and if I would read it today maybe I'd change my mind on that but that's what I wrote down after I finished it. I would be interested to keep reading from the sister's point of view because I, again, I loved the family dynamic. I loved her, oh my gosh, her grandmother was so funny. I loved her grandmother. I loved the sisters and I would really love to keep reading from them. So maybe I'll connect more to a different sister's story. But unfortunately, this one just didn't live up to that five star but i mean a 3.5 is not bad it still in my opinion was above average just not exactly the five star i was expecting it to be i don't know so next is the month of march and i didn't read a thing i did not pick up a single book in the month of march if that tells you how my march went but next in april i picked up the project by courtney summers and i gave that a 3.25 stars i listen to this book on audio and I did it very quickly and so I remember that I was pretty interested when I first picked this up because I was interested in the cult aspect. I think that stuff is fascinating and so I was really excited to pick this up even though another unpopular opinion I wasn't the biggest fan of Sadie when I read it, but I thought maybe this one, since it was a little different subject matter, maybe I'd like it a little bit more. And I actually did like it more than Sadie. Courtney Summers' books so far to me have just been kind of a letdown in the sense that they don't really live up to what I'm expecting them to be. And I think I'm putting on, maybe I'm putting unfair expectations on books because I keep saying that they were a huge letdown to me. Next I read Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ding and I know that I am like the last person on the planet to read this book but I loved it. I gave it four stars. It was another one I listened to and I listened to it pretty quickly. I don't even know how to give a synopsis to this book without giving things away. It involves family, it involves friends, and basically anything. It's so good. I see why it's hyped up. It is hyped for a reason. Next we reach May and this is when I read the most. I didn't even count how many books I read but I finally got on my book loving kick again and I was excited about it and I was very much just mood reading like whatever I felt like reading I decided to pick up. So the first book that I read was In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware and I gave this book 3.5 stars. This book follows a group of women who go on a bachelorette party in this cabin and our main character whose name I cannot remember she isn't really friends with the bride-to-be anymore and so she isn't really sure why she was invited but this book flashes between the party and our main character waking up in a hospital and not remembering what happened. From the beginning, I was really loving this book. I thought it was going to be five stars. I was so hooked. And then the ending felt so predictable and very just eh. And I realized that that's exactly how I felt with Turn of the Key, also by Ruth Ware, because the lead up to everything happening made me think it was going to be some crazy ending and I was expecting so much and the ending was so just blah. I know that people are pretty divided on their opinions about Ruth Ware. Some people really love her books and some people really don't and I think that I can see both sides because I'm kind of right in the middle of that. I did have fun with it. It was a fine book. Um, it's not necessarily a go-to recommendation but it was good. It was fine. Next, I read Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey, and I gave this book 1.5 stars. I had seen some Goodreads reviews where people were kind of split on it, and so I just wanted to read it to see what I thought, not really knowing anything about it, and I really did not like this book. Since I went in really blind, I wasn't aware 
that this was a romance between a former baseball player and a clown named Georgie. Hi, uh, Georgie. I thought that this book was promising in the beginning because even though Georgie the Clown was our female love interest, the male love interest was a former baseball player. It, it kind of made me think of the Bromance Book Club because I really liked the group of baseball players there so I was kind of hoping that maybe he would be kind of like that but er, no hated him he was so cocky and just annoying I really disliked him he just wasn't charming he called her baby girl constantly and it wasn't like really cute at all I mean it was like every sentence he would call her baby girl and I hated it also the characters were so annoying I disliked her brother her friends her family basically any character in the book I disliked she was the only one that didn't completely make me mad and I still didn't like her as a character. I did bump it up 0.5 stars because I was feeling generous. I don't know. There were some fun scenes that weren't too bad to read from but like for the most part I really just despised this whole book. On the flip side, next I read It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover which was my first Colleen Hoover romance and oh my goodness, five stars. I loved this book. So this book follows Lily and she moves from Maine, I believe, to a town in a town. <laughs> she moves to Boston and it follows her relationship with a neurosurgeon named Ryle. And then it is also kind of flashing back to her in high school through these letters that she's reading uh, from her diary, but instead of like Dear Diary, she writes to Ellen DeGeneres, which is kind of funny. And I don't want to give too much away about this book because like I said, I absolutely loved it. I just thought this book was incredible. There are definitely tons of trigger warnings in this book, so I would highly recommend looking those up before going into this book. It's not something that I would recommend going in completely blind to, but I really loved it. I did know about some of this subject matter beforehand. Also, I would highly recommend reading the author's note at the end. Reading Colleen Hoover's inspiration for this book made me so emotional. But yeah, this was like an automatic five star read for me. I absolutely adored it. So, so good. And then finally, I read three books that will be for a secret DVR that I promise I'm gonna post. I won't let this one hang in the draft. So those were my recent reads from the months of February to the end of May. But thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know if you have read any of the books that I've mentioned in this video. Um, and then also subscribe if you are not. So I will hopefully see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you.